Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Blood Bowl 3 Undead Guide. Undead are definitely one of the best teams in the game at this moment. Uh, up there with Orcs. They're great in every format, great in like the normal ladder, great in leagues, great in NAF style. Um, so yeah, this and this is uh, this is what they look like. They've got a couple of mummies that beat everything up. They've got a couple of whites that can pick up the ball, can blitz people, stuff like that. They've got ghouls which are usually ball orientated, um, annoyance pieces, quick, agile, dodge around a bit, and then you've got the very durable linemen uh, that are zombies. Uh, so th this is this is the build that I'd usually go with. Um, to start with, it's got the three rerolls for reliability. What you could do is drop down to two rerolls for a third ghoul, but that isn't that isn't great to be honest, because you know you really want the three rerolls. Um, Undead have actually taken a hit in the new rules. Mummies used to be 120 and ghouls used to be 70, so they've they've essentially lost a ghoul. The, the starting roster used to be three ghouls and three rerolls, which was much better. So so they have taken a hit in this edition of the rules. But they're still they're still very very strong. Um, there's Amazons there's Amazons are better than them pretty much in the new rules, but you know they're not out yet. So Undead are pretty much the kings of Blood Bowl three right now. So and the Mummies is is you know a big driving force behind that. They're incredible players. They don't have Lona or Bonehead or anything. They've got Mighty Blow, you know the best bashy skill in the game. They've got regeneration. So like most of the team has regeneration. Every time you cast on a four plus, it doesn't matter. So you know that's like it's way way better than having an apothecary. Way better than having an apothecary. Having multiple regen players. Um, so they're only movement three. That's like the big weakness is movement three. Strength five is amazing. Edge five doesn't really matter. They're not going to dodge. Navy ten plus is pretty good. Um, their skill wise. Generals are, second, generals are secondary for them, strength is primary. So the most important skills are block and guard. And um, you're gonna, you know, which one you'd take first would depend on how many star player points he was on and how long you were playing the team for and what your ultimate goal was with the team. It, usually, um, I, I guess I'd say Guard first is better in the short term. Block first is kind of better in the medium to long term. Um, I tend to just get guard on just to make the team better instantly. But certainly if you wait a little bit and get block quicker, because by, by not taking guard, you're, you know, you're shaving some SPPs off the time it takes to get to block, then you're gonna, there's going to be a payoff later, but of course... You'll suffer a bit earlier, but not not much suffering, right? Undead are a great team, low TV. They only really start to fall off at higher TVs. Um, so they're the big two, block and guard. Then you'll want stand firm, of course, because it's like the other big strength skill. Stops one turn, stops people blocking you away, uh, you know, on uphills and stuff. So block, guard, stand firm, the three big ones for him. After that, you're looking at dodge. A lot of people like dodge, make them impossible to knock over. But in this edition of the rules, you know, at secondary their agility. This edition of the rules, you are looking to pick up defensive. If yeah, that's a great skill because now he's strength five. People just can't hit him at all, right? Because they've got a strength four player. Like say with orcs, they've got a couple of guards in, but it just doesn't matter. They just can't hit this mummy, and then this mummy is still just going to be standing around strength five with guard. Nobody can hit it, and then it will hit back. Incredible, incredible defensive is is really really incredible for them. Um, you, th there's arguments for like you know being kind of crazy and randoming agility because you could get defensive dodge or jump up <laughs> um, or even diving tackle right and these for 20k would be really good but um, again it would depend on the format and how determined you were to try and make like you know some kind of min max monstrosity um, after that of course you've got characteristic increases Movement is, is great for them, right? Movement five mummies is unbelievable. It, it like takes away their their negative, you know, with movement three. The weakness is completely patched by twenty TV for movement up. Absolutely incredible. Um, strength is is not actually that impactful, right? They're already strength five. They don't really need strength six. Um, Agility is irrelevant. Passing is irrelevant. And AV is always good. You know, they can get a plus AV. You really don't want to lose them. 
Um, so taking that plus AV can be very strong. So yeah, that's uh, that is mummies. Great, great players. Maybe best players in the team, right? 125k. They are the linchpins of the team. You always want the mummies involved in the play. Uh, you know, breaking up your opponent's offensive line or leading your own cage and stuff in your own pushes. They are incredible. They're what makes the team. White, so there are your blitzers, you know, um, they're like a human blitzer basically, with minus movement or an orc blitzer with minus AV. So they're, they're, they're a bit, they're a bit gimped on that front. They're also passing is also terrible. So they're, they're not, they're not the best blitzers. They've just got block. They've got regeneration. So they're like they're kind of overcosted for their stat line, but they do have regeneration. And they're also invaluable on this team because of the three plus agility, you know, like that. It's pretty nice having another player that can actually do something. And, and movement six is okay as well. Um, general wise, they kind of want to tackle, right? You, you, want to, you want these guys to be your tackle mighty blow players, pretty much, because they get strength on primaries as well. So the big ones there, guard and mighty blow, you kind of want all three of those and not much else. You could indeed take plus AV after you finish your player. The way I look at t players and teams in, in Blood Bowl 3, Blood Bowl 2020 is once your player is completed, you can just save up and get AV. Like it's not, you know, it's not essential to the build, right? You take the things that are essential and then your player is finished. You don't want to bloat them up by taking something that's not quite as good. Like for example, let's go straight into this. This ghoul here, if he takes block on a normal, and then takes sidestep on a normal. Now, there's not another skill that he desperately wants, right? So anything you take, like tackle or kick or something, is just is going to be a little bit suboptimal for the TV. So therefore, I'd rather just wait and wait and wait and keep a block dodge sidestep player, which is great. And then eventually, if they get loads of SPPs, then give them plus AV or plus movement or whatever. But um, so that 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 but. Generally, that's what I do. You finish a player, and then you're happy with them, and eventually, one day, if they don't die somehow, they'll get plus AV. Uh, and I mean, this is a good player to do that with because they have gone up in value, 75k, movement seven, they're only armor eight plus, so they are very fragile, but they're strength three with dodge and movement seven, so they're very, very mobile. And if they get, you know, the first two touchdowns, you'll give them block, and then they're really hard to knock down. You could give them wrestle. There's also it's also quite strong to give them just a random general, right? Because block is a really good hit, wrestle is a really good hit, tackle's okay, sure hands is okay, kick isn't terrible, dirty players a hit. So you can hit quite a lot of things on a on a random general, but um it's totally fine to just pick, you know, pick block or wrestle or dirty player as well. And then for their Agility skills, you're looking at sidestep straight away. You know, well, not straight away, after block. <laughs> um, also, if you know, if you go wrestle, then you could take tackle. Or if you random tackle, then you could pick wrestle and stuff, stuff like this. So it gives you those kind of options. But agility-wise, yeah, sidestep after block. Um, you've also got sprint sure feet, which is something you can do. Like if you're building a one-turner, that's very much an option due to the fact that movement is guaranteed now if you wait long enough. So again, depending on format, you could make a movement nine, agility two plus, sprint sure feet sidestep player for one turning. Um, that can be good. And also again, you can random because you're hitting sidestep, sprint and sure feet on one turner and sneaky git. Sneaky git is incredible. It seems crazy to build a ghoul as a sneaky git, but they're just, it's just so powerful, right? Like, it's kind of crazy. It's actually worth taking Sneaky Git on Gutter Runners, the, like, absolute best player in the game that makes, that makes the whole team tick, and you're still quite happy to take Sneaky Git on them. It's crazy how good Sneaky Git is. So I definitely want a Sneaky Git dirty player on the team um, in progression. Really, really good. But, yeah, ghouls are great. Starting with two is pretty painful, and as I say, you could drop a reroll, and the dedicated fan to start with three, um, you could even then like st still have 11 players and start with more dedicated fans. Th possible, but I do think this is better. Now uh, Now we've got the, the lineman here, and it's either a zombie lineman or a skeleton lineman. And it, I would never ever... Well, sometimes, once in a blue moon, I will take skeletons. And I'll tell you when I'll take skeletons. As like, maybe he's the 14th player, and he'll only ever see the field if I'm getting diced. 
and loads of my players have died. And if loads of my players have died, then I'm but then you know I'm going to need the movement to do something, right? I'm in desperation player. The other guy's got loads of guard and stuff, loads of strength, loads of guard, loads of mighty blow. I've got to like make something happen, and then this one extra move might help with that. But um, lots of people say it's better for fouling. They're not really, you know. Um, they were they were somewhat better for fouling in on fumble years ago because it was bugged and the fouling took a square of movement. But they're really not better for fouling. Um, they, you know, they've they've got AV eight plus and thick skull, and they do have PA of six plus. But they're essentially just the same as zombies, except they're trading AV for movement, and they're getting thick skull. Um, and it's just not good, right? They, they do get removed the same amount of time as zombies, but they get like they get stunned so much more. They get stunned so much more than zombies. And their job is to stand around and get punched. And you don't want your guys getting punched to be stunned, you know? So the PA doesn't really matter. The movement barely matters. The AV is really good. Um, <laughs> you, what you could do is, with a, you could take skeletons and you could get plus AV on them. <laughs> and, then, and then with plus AV, you know, then they become quite, you know, quite a bit better, right? Because they, they're a zombie with a move up and thick skull for 10 TV. So then they're starting to look a lot better if they get plus AV, but it's, you know, you don't want that many SPPs on a skeleton. And and if you had that many SPPs on a zombie, he'd have dirty play sneaky git, which is way better. So, you know, that's uh, it's kind of crazy. So yeah, avoid skeletons is my advice. And I made a, another couple of teams up here. So we've got, this is the team that I'd take to Euro Bowl if I was playing undead. This is uh, using the two point package. So NAF style, um, resurrection style. Th this is this is a little bit abnormal, right? Because the Euro Bowl rosters do have packs, and the pack that gives you an extra skill would allow three of a certain skill only. So they'd get three guard, three block, and then that would leave them with two wrestle. And then I so I'd take a tackle right on this uh, blitzer because you know low TV. You you've got you need to deal with like Amazons and stuff in NAF style. So. This would be my Euro Bowl if you're into NAF style. Um, and, you know, I think this is pretty standard. Um, two people in Super League went for this build, which is, you know, Euro Bowl rules. So, yep, I think this is a very good roster for NAF style. Usually, though, you would get, you know, less skills than this, right? So you, you might drop the guards off the mummy and take more block on the ghouls. But um, for Euro Bowl, this is it. This is what I decided for this series was Euro Bowl rules. So there you go. That is it. Two-point package. I like that a lot. Um, for season six of Blood Bowl three official ladder, the cap is eighteen hundred. So whenever you're making a team, you should when building a team, playing a team, you should think about what your team's going to look like at eighteen hundred. And this is what I came up. With. I'm not saying this is definitively how I'd want to build them or anything. I just came up with this very quickly, you know, for this video. Um, we're looking at you know pretty much the same right as the. NAF style of four ghouls, 13 players, so you can foul a bit. Still three rerolls, you can't get rid of rerolls in, uh, apart from it redraft, and there's no redraft in Blood Bowl 3, so you do have to think, you know, if you if you, if you you only ever want two rerolls, then you have to start with two rerolls. So there, there, is a, there is a possibility of that, but I just like, rerolls are so good in this format, right? If, it, if the cap was 1700, I probably would have two rerolls. It's better to drop rerolls than other things, but you still really want the rerolls to do things. Um, so yeah, so you can see here the mummies, um, bot guards stand firm, they're the best skills you can get them. And then we've gone for the defensive here, very expensive, and a couple of AV ups. Like, honestly, we could have uh, plus movement there as well, like there's... There's, you know, like, do you, do you really need this sneaky kit? Not really. That could be two plus movements on the mummies. That might be better. Like, I'm not saying this is great. It's just there's loads of things you can do, and it would depend on how many star player points players accrued and stuff. So you would you would want it would be situational, uh, along with what other skills are on the team at the time. But you know, this is this is your basic thing to think about, right? Um, white guard, mighty, and tackle, and that's pretty obvious. Um, they're the, the your two best strength skills basically your two best general skills again you could think about um like randoming right they could random strength because you've got guard mighty blow and stand firm would be a hit in that case you could think about randoming agility for sidestep 
dodge defensive but it's not great i think i think just building them like this is is sensible and uh yeah the, the ghouls block and sidestep right for most of them i think it's very nice you could build a wrestle tackler i'm just not really a fan of wrestle tackle but people like it you could totally do that uh, and then you know we've gone for like just a good ball carrier right sure hands two plus movements and a plus agility so this this player you know it's great what great at one turning just a great ball carrier in general like this is a pretty standard a pretty standard ghoul to have now i say that obviously he could die before he gets there um, you know but it's pretty nice it, usually this guy will have a niggle or two by the time he gets here minute maybe minus pa something like this but you know you'll you'll see a lot of teams get get a dedicated ball carrier with plus two movement and plus one agility it's it's pretty easy with the way that the leveling up works these days and then a sneaky get dirty player i definitely want to rush a sneaky get dirty player ghoul as soon as possible um I, I would i would just pick the sneaky git after six spp and then i would pick the uh, dirty player after that as well i would just i would just speed one but then after that i would start you know and i'd pick a block sidestepper as well but then i'd start randoming the other two and then you know if they got a dirty player for 10k then all of a sudden that's shaving 10k off this that's letting you squeeze in another plus av or a plus movement on the mummy or something so you know this this isn't exactly how i'd build these zombies you know the early on you can give them block i didn't actually talk about the skills for zombies did i but early on like if it's the first few games i give them block because if i'm lacking block then i want safe blocks so i'll give them block if if, if they level kind of early on in team development but later on they ju you just want extra dirty players to foul things and and you know a dirty player sneaky kit would be fine but you know the, the, this 40 tv on the sneaky kit isn't so good that could definitely be plus movement on the mummies it would just depend you know where, where your spp fell and what happened and you know maybe you could just save zombies and like you know random agility and maybe get a sneaky git like you know <laughs> random general maybe get block wrestle dirty player kick you know there's this kind of well not kick right because these guys are going to be in the line i've i've had kick ghouls before that's kind of fine and you know the ghouls could have tackle you, you get a lot of options and again it would depend on what randoms you rolled you want to run them as much as is feasible for yourself. So if you're willing to play loads of games, then you'll run them a lot. If you, don't run, if you don't want to play loads of games, you don't have the time to play loads of games, you don't want to play loads of games, then you've got to, you know, run them less. But um, it, this is just an example of the sort of thing you could build. So yeah, that's it. Um, that is the Undead build. I'm going to do a run where I play about 20 games. I'm going to, I'm going to aim for 20 games. And then I'm going to do like a summary of the game afterwards, a turn by turn summary. So we'll, we'll have like the live game and then the summary and uh, a brief summary. And I'll see how that works. I, I like the idea. So I'll at least do it for these undead. And, uh, you know, you can see, you can see if you, I'll see if you give it the seal of approval or not. See how much you enjoy it. Uh, but there you go. That's undead. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.